So, good afternoon. You had some exam today? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Awful? Hmm. Ah, well, I hope for best. So I what? <laughs> it was not so good? Uh, well, anyway, we'll see. But, uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> so, you're all very unhappy? <laughs> Is there? Yeah. yeah? Uh, it wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone was expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will have a look. Let's see. Okay, so maybe now I I start all the same. So, um, so we um, wanted to talk about. Um, uh, I said we wanted to talk now about finite fields. This was just some kind of interlude. So that uh, we see that finite fields, at least, we can understand completely. And um, so the idea is we want to classify the finite fields up to isomorphism. So we know, so if uh, P is a prime number, Uh, then, uh, uh, then uh, if I take ZP, which as a field I call FP with the usual multiplication, so the numbers modulo P um, with the additional multiplication is a field, uh, and it has P elements, which I can identify with the numbers from 0 to p minus 1. And uh, <coughs> so now we want to show uh, up to isomorphism so for every prime pump power P to the n, there is a unique uh, field with uh, P to the n elements. So in there are Q, there is a unique field with P to the n elements. And there are no other finite fields. So if a field is finite, it has to have P to the n elements for some prime p. <clears throat> okay. So first, uh, so we know that the characteristic of a finite field must be a prime number p, no? Because the characteristic, if the characteristic is zero, then it's uh, the field must be infinite, and so um, so let uh, say f. So maybe this is called a lemma. So anyway, for the rest of this section, so let uh, p be a prime number. and n a positive integer, and uh, q equal to p to the n a prime power. And so let lemma, we take a field of characteristic p, Then, if you look uh, uh, at this, the following polynomial, this, the polynomial x to the q minus 1, so q is uh, p to the n, as here, has precisely q simple roots, so simple zeros, in its splitting field.
So, so over FQ, over F. Okay. So, if we look at the zeros in any extension of F of this uh, thing, there will be Q simple roots. So as many roots as the degree, and all are different. This is very simple. I just have to see that there are no multiple roots. So if uh, A is a multiple root, then we have seen last time that uh, both uh, the polynomial and the derivative of the polynomial have to vanish at A. So then uh, x to the p minus 1. So, so if I take x to the p minus 1 applied to A is equal to 0. And if I take the derivative of x to the p minus 1 applied to A, this is equal to 0. But this polynomial is the constant polynomial minus 1. This is equal identically equal to minus 1. So therefore, this will never happen. So thus, uh, we have no multiple roots. So we can see that, <coughs> so thus we see that this polynomial has always Q simple roots. And we will see that actually uh, we find all the finite fields as uh, the splitting fields of this polynomial over Fp for different values of n. So let's start with that. First, we want to show that there exists a field with Q elements. Q, which was p to the n elements for every prime power p to the n. Well, so we just take the following. We look again at this thing. So let k be the splitting field of this polynomial x to the q minus 1 over f over fp over the finite field fp with p elements and uh, we put f to be inside the splitting field just the set of all the roots of all the zeros of this polynomial Say A in. Yeah, except I made a mistake. And you should have noticed. I mean, there's a misprint, in, not in the notes, but in what I've written here. Obviously, it's x to the p. I want to have x to the p minus x. Because uh, you can see, uh, if I take the derivative of this one, this will be p, which is 0. But we want it to be, I wanted it to be minus 1. And this is if I have x here. If I take the derivative of x to the p minus x, this would be minus 1. So this is the polynomial I want. Okay. But so this maybe shows I was a bit too fast because you didn't notice. Anyway, so we take this polynomial here too. So we take this splitting field of this. So this is the set of all in k, a in k, such that uh, a to the q minus x so minus a is equal to 0. So now we want to see that this is a field. So claim f is a field. We know that it has q elements because that is just what we said here. There are q different roots. Well, you just have to see that the field axioms are satisfied. Um, so 
obviously we have uh, 1 to the q minus 1 is equal to 0. And uh, we have, if we have um, uh, a to the, so if uh, a is an element of f and b is an element of f, then we have a to the q minus is equal to a and b to the q is equal to b. And so if we take a, b to the q, uh, this is a times b by just applying this. So it follows that a times b is an f. And if we take minus a to the q, Do we need that actually? No. If we take a to the minus 1 to the q, this obviously is uh, a to the q to the minus 1 is equal to a to the minus 1. And so also a to the minus 1 is in f. And what is more interesting, or what is, uh, comes from the fact that we are over a finite field is uh, that also the sum is there. So if I take a plus b to the q, now you can compute this by the binomial coefficient, obviously. So this is a priori sum uh, i from 0 to q, uh, q choose i. Uh, a to the i, b to the q minus i. But it's a, a very easy fact to see that f if q is a prime number, that all these binomial coefficients are divisible by, uh, by, q. Uh, yeah, by q, or at least by p, but they are, I think, also visible by q if, um, um, if i is not equal to 0 or q. No? So this is equal, equal to 0. So you know, here we are computing in, 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 you know, in, this is an element in, so in this field. So we have a field of characteristic p. So p is equal to 0. Any multiple of p is equal to 0. So this binomial coefficient will be equal to 0 unless i is equal to 0 or q in which case it's 1. So this thing is just a equal to the q plus b to the q. And this we know is equal to a plus b. So also uh, a plus b is in f. And let me see what I have. Uh, and it's the same if we have instead of plus, if we put a minus, we get the same thing. So here, <clears throat> so if i is equal to q, now at the moment I seem to be, yeah. So if, if q is equal to a power of 2, then the characteristic 2, so a plus b is equal to a minus b. And if q is not that, is, is, a, is a power of an odd prime, then q, you know, q is odd. And then if I put a minus here, I get a minus here. So in any case, I can put a minus here and a minus here. OK. And so putting all this together, we get thus f is a field. with q elements. So <clears throat> now what we want to see that f actually is equal to k, that f is the splitting field of this polynomial. And as such, uh, will be uniquely determined. 
So at least we have now a field with Q elements and now we want to see. <coughs> uh, so anyway, it is clear just to remark this that uh, if uh, uh, I already I think said that F is a finite field so then it must have finite characteristics so assume of characteristic P uh, so then I can look at uh, the uh, subfield generated by one so then F contains the set of all n times 1, where n is in z. So just you, this means you add 1 n times to itself as before, as a, I mean, if or as a subset, but it's a subfield because if you add or subtract such things or multiply them, you stay in this remark. as a subfield. And this set, um, maybe I call this F0, and F0 is isomorphic or essentially equal to Fp. It's a field with P elements. No? We have seen that uh, the field has characteristic P, so P times 1 will be equal to 0. Um, and, uh, and that's the smallest number for which is equal to zero. So this, uh, this thing here is just equal isomorphic to Fp. And F then must be a field, ex you know, F contains this as a subfield, so F is an extension of this, of Fp. And as it's a finite field, it's a finite extension of Fp. So thus, F is a finite extension of Fp. So in particular, if it's a finite extension of Fp, it's a finite dimensional P vector space, Fp vector space. So in particular, F is a finite dimensional Fp vector space. No, because we had uh, always seen that uh, for a field extension, then the bigger field is a vector space over the smaller one. And so, thus, in particular, uh, the number of elements, so say so I write like this the number of elements of F is equal to uh, the number of elements of Fp, which is P to the power, the dimension of this, to the n, power n, where n is the dimension of f as fp vector space, which is just equal, as we know, to the degree of the field extension. OK, so in particular, we know that a finite field must have as an order uh, the number uh, p to the n for some n and the prime p and that it is a finite extension of it. And now we want to um, show that it actually must be as said the splitting field of this polynomial I've written there, proposition. So let f be a finite field. with p to the n elements. So p to n was q elements. Then we say it is the splitting field of this polynomial over fp.
um, x to the q minus x over f p. So, which then in particular means that, funnily enough, uh, this will show that our finite field with f to the p uh, with the q elements consists precisely of all the zeros of this polynomial. So we have to see, <coughs> basically we want to see that uh, uh, every element in F must satisfy this equation. So, every A in F satisfies a to the q minus a is equal to 0. So obviously, uh, so we start very slowly. So if a is equal to 0, then this is true. So we have already checked it for one element. So we, now we have only q minus 1 to go. So, but now we look at f without 0. So with the multiplication. So the multiplicative group of f, this is a group. So is a, is a finite group. with, uh, uh, you know, one element less, obviously, q minus one elements. Now, you know, generally if, you know, we already have seen this uh, near the beginning of the course, if g is a finite group, And we take any any element g in g, uh, so a finite group, uh, say, of order k, and uh, if g is an element in g, well, then I claim uh, if I take g to the k, this is equal to the identity element in g. So the unit element, so the neutral element in G. And why is this? Um, you know, I can look at the, the subgroup generated by G is a subgroup. And um, so as it's a subgroup, its order is a divisor of the number of elements of G. So divides this number K. Uh, on the other hand, we also know that uh, no, the subgroup is just given by taking all the powers of G. So uh, we have that uh, the order of G, which by definition is the smallest uh, n in Z bigger than zero, such that uh, G to the n is equal to 1, is equal to the order of this group. You know, because the, we had seen that the elements are just 1 g g squared until g to this order minus 1. So, 
so we if uh, so we have that uh, so so thus uh, we have that the order of g divides our number k and now if we take uh, g to the k so i can write um, k equal to l times the order of g so this will be equal to g to the order of g to the power l this is 1 to the l is equal to 1 so therefore we see that g to the k is equal to 1 so anyway this I'm, i don't remember whether we covered this before but it's always true if you have a finite group and any element then if you take it the power of the order of the group you get 1 so thus <coughs> now we go back to our situation if we take an element a in f without zero if you have an element a in f without zero then if we take a to the q minus 1 then by what we have just seen this is equal to 1 so if you multiply this by a we have a to the q is equal to a so thus we have shown that for all elements a and f this identity holds so <clears throat> So now obviously as uh, this polynomial x to the q minus x has degree uh, q it can have at most uh, q roots in its splitting field so it means um, the polynomial splits into linear factors over f thus x to the q minus x splits over f into linear factors No, because we have all the zeros and it's uh, the product of the factors of all the linear factors <coughs> for the for all the zeros and so and on the other hand we have uh, but then f is the splitting field of uh, this polynomial because it consists only of zeros of it so you know if you remember we had the statement that if we have a field over which a polynomial splits so we we start with this small field K and we have a big field L so in L we have a polynomial in Kx which uh, splits over L uh, then if we uh, join all the zero all the zeros of this polynomial to the smaller field we get precisely the splitting field and this we have done here we have joined all the zeros of this polynomial to uh, to FQ it happens to be that these are also all the elements of the field but that doesn't make a difference this thing does not contain uh, I mean contains only uh, roots of this thing so it therefore it is the splitting field it splits and it doesn't contain anything which you cannot express in terms of roots uh, in, because in fact it only consists of roots okay so we have found um, where are we
So thus it is the splitting field. So we can put it together. So we know that the splitting field of a, a polynomial over a field is uniquely determined up to isomorphism. So therefore, uh, uh, this uh, uh, the finite field of p to the n elements is uniquely determined up to isomorphism. So you have, can just put what we have learned in a theorem together. So finite fields with um, say p to the n elements exist only no so finite fields with q elements uh, exist only if q is a prime power p to the n and for each um, prime power p to the n there is up to isomorphism a unique field with p to the n elements. namely the splitting field of this stupid polynomial. So this is now x to the p to the n minus x over fq, over fp. OK, so this is what we proved. and so. One can say that we have uh, understood everything that there is to say about the classification of finite fields. So, um, so there's not so much. We have this kind of list for every prime power. There's one up to isomorphism. And uh, anyway, so it's not such a complicated story. <clears throat> so in some sense, from now on, we can mostly restrict ourselves to fields which are not finite. OK, so that's what I wanted to say about this. this is more like an aside, just to show that one can at least completely understand the finite fields. Now we want to go on with the general theory, and we want to introduce the Galois groups. So later we will want to understand field extensions in terms of their Galois groups. And the Galois group of a field extension L over K is the group of K I automorphisms of L. So let me uh, do this now. So Calva groups. So we want to understand a little bit about them and we want to introduce them. So as I said, so if L over K is a field extension, then the Galois group, so the Galois group after after Galois, the French mathematician, uh, uh, is um, of L over K, is, uh, so I write it Gal L over K, um, is the group of uh, K automorphisms. of L. So um, it's clear that 
you know, these are automorphisms of L, so they form a group via composition, you know, as uh, automorphisms always do. And you, know, you recall that a K automorphism is an automorphism of L, which is the identity on K, which sends every element of K to itself. So these form a group, and we want to uh, use this group to understand this field extension. Now, in the moment, that doesn't look particularly good because this seems a rather unconcrete thing. You, know, you have this field extension, and you have this group of automorphisms of the bigger field over the smaller that seems to be something very complicated, which is impossible to understand. So we want to see that you can say something about it. So in particular, if uh, L is a splitting field of some polynomial with coefficients in K, then this Gyra group will turn out to be a subgroup of the group of permutations of the roots of this polynomial. Okay? So it certainly, in particular, will be a finite field, but you know, it's uh, concretely described in, as a permutation group. But this we have to prove. And there's also another description. So we will find two different descriptions of this Gyra group as a permutation group, uh, which, depending on the context, are uh, useful. So let's first say, uh, I recall something we said uh, in the group theory part. So if we have a finite, so for a finite set M, we had introduced uh, what I call S of M, the group of permutations of M. which was uh, just the set of all bijections of M to itself. And obviously, if M has N elements, then this is isomorphic to the symmetric group uh, on N letters. Let me also write it so if num of elements of M is equal to N, then SM is isomorphic to SN. So, and uh, recall also that we had talked about actions of groups on a set. And so just, uh, just one word which we had used, an action of a group G on a set M was called simply transitive so we only need that now um, if for any two elements here there is an element in G which sends one to the other so if for all M1 and M2 in M, there is, there, there exists a unique element G in G with. If I apply the action of G to M1, I get M2. So the action is you know, you recall that the action was called transitive if uh, there always exists a G which sends any M1 to any M2, and if it's unique, it's called simply transitive. And it's easy to see, and we had seen it, that it then follows that the number of elements of G is equal to the number of elements of M. You know, just fixing one element of M, we can identify G we find the bijection of G and M. Okay, these were all things that we had 
E4. And so now we have the first statement about uh, this Galois group for a simple algebraic extension. Theorem. So we take a simple algebraic extension and we want to identify, say something about the Galois group. So we so say of degree n, so that we remember that. And uh, so we have our element A, so we take the minimal polynomial. So then uh, we find that the Galois group will be a subgroup of the group of permutations of the roots of the minimal polynomial. And actually, uh, it will be a subgroup which acts simply transitively. So it will have precisely as many uh, uh, elements as this thing has zeros. So let's see it. So, so let R be the set of zeros of this polynomial. So the set of all B in Ka such that F of B is equal to zero. So this is the set of roots of uh, F in Ka. So then we find that the Galois group of Ka over K acts simply transitively on R. In particular, uh, it is isomorphic to a subgroup of the symmetric group of R. And the number of elements of the Galois group is equal to the number of elements of R. And, uh, you know, F was a minimal polynomial of A. The field extension has degree N. So this polynomial has at most N zeros. So it means that this number R is smaller or equal to N. So we know that this uh, Galois group of Ka over K, K has at most N elements. And it can be identified with the subgroup of the permutations of the roots of this polynomial. Okay, so this we want to see. Where is it? So we first have to see that the Galois group will kind of permute these roots so that an element in the Galois group will always send a root to another root, I mean, to another or the same root. But it doesn't send a root to something which is not a root. So proof. So we take an element in the Galois group. And uh, so if we write um, f equal to some ai, so f was our minimum point polynomial, uh, x to the i. Uh, 
then uh, if we um, if B is an element is an element uh, in in R, so is a is a root of this polynomial, then if we take um, phi of uh, f of b, f of b is equal to zero, so this is phi of zero, and thus zero. We can write this zero in a more complicated way, namely we apply uh, phi to the polynomial, so this is phi of some i equal to zero, i equal to n, a i, a b to the i. And now, you know, phi is a, a ring uh, homomorphism, so it pulls into the sum. The a i are in k, so it is the identity on them. So this is equal to phi of sum i equal to zero, n, uh, no, like this, a i phi to the b to the i. So this is nothing else as f of phi of b. So we see that if b is an r, then also phi of b is an r for any element in the Galois group. What's funny? So thus, phi of b is in r. <coughs> so in particular, we see thus, so if I take phi, and restrict it to R, uh, maps R to itself. And obviously, you know, phi is an automorphism of fields, so it's a bijective map. In particular, it, it is a, a injective, so also the restriction will be injective. because phi is. And uh, as R is a finite set, and I have a finite injective map of a set to itself, it is bijective. So in other words, so phi restricted to R is bijective. So it means phi restricted to R is an element of the symmetric group on R. Now we want to see that the map which sends phi to this restriction is actually an isomorphism, and that uh, this element, uh, you know, that it acts simply transitive. So, so we thus, so we can say thus, we have a map. We have a, a group homomorphism. Because in both cases, the group structure is by composition, so it's the same, um, which I couldn't call the restriction to R from the Galois group of L over uh, of Ka over K to uh, S of R. So, and we, as I said, we will want to show that this is, um, you know, <clears throat> so as I said, this is a group homomorphism because here the, you know, you know the, the <coughs> automorphisms, you know, the composition of automorphisms is just the automorphisms of maps. And here it's also the, uh, it's just the composition of maps, and here it's also the composition. So it's just the same thing, the group structure. So phi composed with psi restricted to R is obviously equal to phi restricted to R composed with psi restricted to R. So we have a 
result, uh, this was the unique extension of uh, automorphisms to uh, simple algebraic extensions, which we proved at the beginning of our field uh, theory uh, adventure. Um, that uh, so that there is a that <coughs> for every root, if whenever you have a root, uh, two roots, then there's always a unique uh, extension of uh, the identity, so a, a unique k isomorphism of k a to itself, which sends one root to the other. So we have seen so a unique extension. of field isomorphisms to simple extensions that for for any two roots that for b1 b2 in r there exists a unique so this means unique phi in the gamma group of k a over k with uh, phi of p1 is equal to p2. Now this was this theorem that we had. Um, so this precisely says that the this group, the Galois group, acts simply transitively on R. No, because that says it for any, uh, so the action is by uh, phi applied to uh, any b is phi of b, and the action is simply transitive. So thus, phi, that is the Galois group of k a over k, acts simply transitively. on R. But if this is the case, then it means also that this map here, uh, so that this restriction map must be injective. So thus, this restriction map Because the, the kernel of the restriction map consists of all elements in the Galois group, which are, uh, you know, which act as the identity here. And according to what we have said here, in particular, this sent one B1 to itself. And I think that this, the only thing that does this is the identity, according to the fact that this acts simply transitively. Okay. So the kernel consists only on of the uh, so <coughs> the identity on K A. So the map that sends every element in K A to itself. So, um, well, and so we are done. We have found that the Galois group of Ka over K is uh, isomorphic to a subgroup of S of R, which acts simply transitively on R. As it acts simply transitively on R, it follows that the number of elements in this group is equal to the number of elements in R.
And as R is a set of roots of this polynomial F, it means that the, you know, the polynomial F has degree n. So the number of uh, roots that it can have is at most n. Now you have to remember that the, the degree of the field extension, so we had the Ka over k was a field extension of degree n. And f was a minimal polynomial. So the degree of the minimal polynomial is n. So the minimal polynomial has at most n roots in Ka. And therefore, this number r is smaller or equal to n. So we have uh, precisely proven what we claimed. So I want to, so <clears throat> want to give uh, some examples, very simple. So the <clears throat> moment we only know that the number of elements in the general group is at most n, if n is the degree of the field extension. So let's look at two cases to see that actually different things can happen. So if we take the Galois group of C, the second root of uh, five, uh, well, of Q, or whatever, I can also take second root of two over Q, then, um, you know, you can see the minimal polynomial of this is x squared plus uh, x squared minus 2. And this uh, splits into x plus second root of 2 and x minus second root of 2. Um, and um, it is clear uh, we have... Um, Inside the, we, I claim that the Galois group, this will be equal to, uh, you know, first we can have the identity, obviously, and then we have the map which exchanges these two roots. So that means if I have an element A plus B square root of 2, this can be sent to A minus B square root of 2. So it's easy to see that this element, this, uh, this map, is a field isomorphism. And it's the identity on, uh, on Q, you know, obviously. And so this, certainly these elements are in the Galois group. And by what we just saw, we see that the Galois group has at most two elements. So this is the Galois group. OK, it's a very simple case. Okay, so if it was always as simple as that, wouldn't have to worry. Now we can look at a more com uh, different example, which instead take the third root of two. So I claim this Galois group is very small, namely it contains just one element, the identity. So we see that the, the minimal polynomial of um, this thing, uh, third root of 2 over q, is, um, you know, obviously x to the third minus 2. But <clears throat> you find that in, uh, third root of, in q, third root of 2, you know, this polynomial has no other, you know, has no other roots. In fact, you know, we had already an example where we had seen that uh, you can, uh, if you want to find the splitting field, or if you find, find another root, you have to actually add a complex number to it. The, this e to the 2 pi i divided by 3, I think. So here there's no other zero of this polynomial. So now the, the theorem says that the Galois group is a subgroup of the, 
uh, of the symmetric group on the roots. There's only one root. The only sub, you know, the symmetric group on one element is one element. So it follows that the Galois group can only be the identity. So, but in some sense, <coughs> we will soon, we will now want to restrict our attention to so-called Galois extension, which are separated and separable and normal extensions. And so in that case, uh, we find that uh, the Galois group will always have order equal to the extension, or to the degree of the field extension. And um, it will be easier to study. So let me see. So, okay, so now we want to introduce Galois extensions. So a field extension L over K, so this is a definition after all, is called normal, is a, a Galois extension. If it is, uh, what do I need? Do I need algebra? I need finite or something? Well, maybe I, I don't know whether that's actually part of the definition, but we only deal with finite extension. So finite free extension is called a color extension if it is separable and normal. And you have to remember that in characteristic P, every field extension is separable, so then the condition would only be normal. So uh, we get as a corollary so let L over K be a Galois extension. of degree n so then uh, the Galois group is isomorphic to a subgroup of Sn So which uh, acts simply transitively on the you know numbers one to n. So the difference to the previous case is that uh, now we really have, a, uh, and so in particular the number of elements in the Galois group is n. So I could also say it like this, the number of elements in the gamma group of L over K is equal to the degree of L over K, which after all is N. So before we had seen this thing where we have it's simply uh, that it is isomorphic to a subgroup of a symmetric group of uh, on the roots, and now we basically we only have to see that there always will be precisely n roots of this uh, minimal polynomial. Um, well, let's see minimal polynomial of what. So let's have a look. So proof. So we have, a, we can, our Galois extension, you know, by the theorem of the primitive element, we can always uh, take it as a simple algebraic extension. You know, for every uh, separable uh, extension, there's a primitive element. For every, uh, okay, so by the theorem of the primitive element,
there is an element A in uh, L such that we can write L equal to K of A. So we find, so our extension is a simple algebra extension, so we are in the situation of the previous theorem. So we know that um, as, um, so let's say, let uh, F be the minimal polynomial polynomial of A over K. So, you know, <coughs> as this field extension L over K is normal, and we have, and F is an irreducible polynomial which has a zero in L, it follows that it splits. Uh, F splits over L into linear factors. And as the field extension is separable, and F is again an irreducible polynomial which has a zero here, you know, all its roots are distinct. all roots uh, of F in L are distinct. So the set R, the set of uh, roots, has precisely N elements, and that's all that we need to know. So thus, R, which was a set of all B in L such that F of B is equal to zero, uh, has R elements, R equal to N. And uh, so, therefore, the Galois group of L over K is isomorphic to a, a subgroup of the symmetric group of R, which is the isomorphic to a symmetric group of on N letters, which acts simply transitively. That was what the previous theorem said. Okay, so this is this um, case. So now we come, uh, now we have a, another proposition. We want to see, so this will be this, uh, mostly lemma we want to use later, that <coughs> Um, so until now, so we know that this Galois group uh, acts uh, on this root of this polynomial, but we, we want to also have some positive results about existence of elements in the Galois group. And so we have the following statement. So again, we have a Galois extension. And we take two elements, A and B and L. So, so <clears throat> then the statement is that there is an element in the Galois group which sends A to B if and only if A and B have the same minimal polynomial. So we know precisely when the Galois group sends an element to another one.
enfim. This is if and only if. Um, A and B have the same minimal polynomial. Uh, over k. I mean, obviously, it's normally not particularly easy to find out what the minimal polynomial of an element of an element is. So it actually would be, I think, mostly used the other around. So if we somehow can prove that two things, um, so <coughs> yeah, we. <coughs> Well, anyway, maybe I will say that later. So now let's see how to see that. It's not particularly difficult. It's a variation of things we had before. You know, again, about extension of field isomorphisms and so on. So if A and so we have obviously two directions. So first we assume that A and B have the same minimal polynomial. We have to find um, an isomorphism, and you have to find an element in the Galois group. Now, certainly, uh, we have that um, we can, uh, we have this uh, statement of the extension of field isomorphisms to the uh, for simple algebraic extensions. So, so by uh, you know, the extension, actually the unique extension of field isomorphisms for simple algebraic extension, statement was if that if two elements have um, the same minimal polynomial, then there will be a an isomorphism from k of a to k of b, which sends a unique isomorphism from k of a to k of b, which sends a to b. But uh, we just need that there exists one. We don't need the uniqueness. So there is a unique, uh, is a k isomorphism c from k of a to k of b. with uh, V of A is equal, C of A is equal to B. So now we have that L over K is a Galois extension. So L is uh, the splitting field of some polynomial um, with coefficients in kx. No, because it's a normal extension. We had seen that if you have a normal extension, an extension is normal if and only if uh, it is the splitting field of some polynomial with coefficients in the smaller. So, so as L over k is normal, we have that L is the splitting field of some polynomial maybe I call it F in Kx over K. Now we know that if um, um, 
if something is a splitting field of a polynomial over some field, then it will also be the splitting field of the polynomial over any intermediate field. of um, uh, f over k and the splitting field of f over kb. And because these are intermediate fields, and so it is also splitting field over these. But then we had this other extension theorem. If you have an, uh, an isomorphism between two fields, then it can be extended. <coughs> uh, so, and you uh, take a polynomial here, and you take the image under this morphism of the polynomial here, and you take the, then it extends to an isomorphism of the splitting, of the splitting field of the polynomial here to the splitting field of that. Okay. So in this particular case, the polynomial is defined over k. So if I apply psi to this polynomial, to the coefficients of the polynomial, I get the same polynomial. So therefore, the extension, the statement about the extension of isomorphisms to splitting fields says there's an extension of psi to L, which is the given map here. So by the extension of isomorphisms to splitting fields, uh, there exists uh, an isomorphism phi from L to itself, so an I also more, uh, uh, with um, phi restricted to Ka is equal to Psi. No? So the, the <coughs> I hope you remember the statement. No? Here we were, you know, it was a somewhat complicated statement. So we have a um, We have a field, k, we have two fields, so I mean just uh, was somehow, just to remind you, you have, uh, so f is in kx, you have an isomorphism phi from k to k prime, and um, we apply, so we take phi star of f is the polynomial which uh, uh, where you apply to the coefficients of the polynomial this isomorphism. And then the statements, and then we take L, the splitting field of F over K, and um, uh, L prime, the splitting field of f prime over k prime. So I, I call this f prime, but maybe now I, I call it phi star f over k prime. Then we had seen there exists an extension. So there exists a phi from L to L prime with phi restricted to k is equal to small phi. This was a general statement, and we have applied it here in the case that k, that what is called k there is k of a, and what is called k prime there is k of b. Okay. So what we have found, so anyway, we have this that phi restricted to Ka is equal to phi, but K, this psi, 
was a k isomorphism. So it means if I restrict psi to k, you know, if we restrict it further to k, it is the identity on k. So it means that psi is an element in the Galois group. So as a psi restricted to ka is equal to psi, so phi, large phi is k, and psi restricted to k is equal to identity on k, it follows that phi is an element in the Galois group of L over k, and by definition, sending a to b. So one direction we showed, if a and b have the same minimal polynomial, then there is an element in the Galois group which sends one to the other. So now we want to show the other direction, which is a bit simpler maybe. I hope you, maybe I will wipe it out here so that you can remember the statement. I hope that's okay. So we want to show the converse. So we take an element in the Galois group which sends A to B. So now we have to, to find that A and B have the same minimal polynomial. Well, that's not so difficult. We take F and G and G. F, minimal polynomial of A, over K, and uh, G, minimal polynomial of B over K. Then I can use the same simple observation as before, which I maybe write down once more. So I have 0 is obviously equal to f of a, and therefore it's also equal to phi of f of a. And uh, by the same computation as before, this is the same as f of phi of a, which is f of b. So we see that b is also a 0. of f. But, uh, you know, g is the minimal polynomial of b. So it follows that g divides f. g divides f. But obviously, I could have ex done it the other way around. I could exchange the role of A and B and say the same for uh, G of B is a zero. Uh, so phi of G of B is a zero of G and be by taking phi to the minus one. So in the same way, exchanging the role of A and B, we have that. Uh, F divides G. So as F and B, F and G are both monic polynomials, it means they're equal. Okay. So this proves this uh, proposition. And uh, so much time? Ah, basically no time. Hmm. So, so let me see. Okay. So I will maybe at least, well, maybe I can even prove it. So the next result, <coughs> so maybe I first make a, 
definition. So with the, <coughs> the next result, which is quite easy to prove, will be one of the, will be half of the main theorem of Galois theory. So, um, and basically we have worked until now to prove it. It's now quite simple. But anyway, maybe I first make a definition. So let um, L over K, well, it's a bit, do you really want to make a definition? Uh, be a Galois group, be a Galois extension. And um, let uh, G be a subgroup of the Galois group. Then we can consider the uh, fixed set of this thing. So then let fix of G be the set of all elements A in L such that phi of A is equal to A for all G in G. So we have the, <laughs> we'll see later that this is actually always a field, but it, it doesn't matter now. So we have the, we can look at, look at the, the set of all elements in, in L, which are fixed under all elements in G, where G is a subgroup. So the moment we are only interested in this, in the case, G is a subgroup of the Galois group. Ah, yeah. Okay, so I, maybe I call it, maybe I'll also call it phi. So elements in the Galois group are always called phi. Okay. So the theorem that we want to show, and you will later see that it's an important step, uh, is so if you have a Galois extension, we can ask ourselves, what is uh, this uh, fixed field f if we take the whole Galois group? So then if we take the fix of the Galois group of L over K, this is just K. So an element in the Galois group will be an element in the field a big field will be fixed under the whole Galois group if and only if it is in the smaller field of the field extension. Hmm. Let me see. Where is it? I think, I think that's fairly we can still prove it, it's fairly simple. So we have two inclusions. Um, so this inclusion uh, is clear because obviously every element in K is fixed under the Galois group. By definition, the elements in the Galois group are the identity on K. And now conversely, so we assume that phi of A, so A is an element in L, that phi of A is equal to A for all phi in the Galois group. We have to show that A is in K. So we take the minimal polynomial. A over K. No, that even makes sense if A lies in K because uh, then it's just a linear polynomial. Um, 
So as L over K is a normal extension, we know that the Galois group splits, that, uh, that F splits over in L. So let B be another root, be any other root of F in L. Then we have seen there exists an element in the Galois group so which sends A to B. in the Galois group with phi of A is equal to B. Well, it's actually here. Okay. So we have made the assumption that uh, uh, our element that phi of A is equal to A for all elements in the Galois group, so it follows thus A is equal to B by our assumption. The assumption that uh, A is fixed under all elements in the Galois group. So it means that all the roots of F are equal. On the other hand, L over K, you know, it was a Galois extension, it's also a separable extension. And F was a minimal polynomial, so F is irreducible. In K over K. And has obviously a zero. So in L, so it follows that it has no multiple roots in L. So for one thing, all the roots are equal. On the other hand, it has no multiple roots. That means there's only one root. This polynomial is a, a polynomial of degree one. a linear polynomial. And therefore, A is in K. And this proves this result. <coughs> OK, so this uh, maybe is enough. <coughs> As you see, this was not so particularly difficult, but uh, one always, you know, one always kind of uses the same thing, but always in a, each time in a slightly different way. So, um, anyway, so this is this, and next time we will at least start and maybe even finish the proof of the principal theorem of Galois theory. And uh, okay, so any questions? Hmm. <laughs> I, Okay, thanks. Yeah.